appraisal is a set of documents appraisal is just not not just a page but it's actually a you know entire set sets of different documents it is going to include so many things so like what is about subject property right and if it is a purchase then contract and then what about the neighborhood what is the site what is the improvements in the property and what are the different approach and then somebody is going to reconcile everything right so going to conclude the entire document so it's a set of documents not just one page or one single thing that will be included in this appraisal document it's entire set of document different documents it is going to give us uh, especially for the subject property what is subject property so we know that what is subject property right so like subject property detail then uh, contract then if contract detail sale contract purchase contract detail contract detail will include in this that this property is being sold on this price then what is the neighborhood right neighborhood then it will go to site okay from there the property improvement subject property improvements these are the different uh, sections that appraisal will cover and then the approach and then conclusion right everything will be included in the appraisal document so when it comes to subject property the first section is the subject property where everything who is the borrower what is the subject property address plus who is the current owner if it's a obviously if it's a sale or it's a purchase case then obviously the owner is going to be different then what is the subject property taxes whether that is a pad property so everything about the subject property whether that is occupied by owner occupied by tenant or it's a vacant property everything will be in this subject section number 2 is contract detail okay so what is the contract detail of the document now what is the sale price right whether that property is still listed or not if it was listed where it was listed right and then neighborhood neighborhood like this is our property what is the sector where this property what about the neighborhood area whether there are parks how it is surrounded whether there are school right so all about the neighborhood area of that section right and then site then from neighborhood we will come to the site it's the property site so we will get into the site first what is the site what is the area of site whether that is legal in illegal what is the zoning compliance for that property right then from site we will get into the property improvements we'll get into the property what is the gla gross living area of this property right what is the exterior condition interior condition send all the photographs will be included there right then we will go to the approach of the property approach are going to be different type of like cost approach right comparison approach then going to be income approach so that we are going to discuss then we are going to conclude everything so we, in conclusions we will have we will have appraisal detail so one is appraisal that is the document or report but somebody need to create this that is known as appraiser who is going to create this report that is appraiser so both are different terms appraisal is the document is a report whereas appraiser is the one who is a certified person for that particular area for particular state that is the person who will be you know giving us all this detail will notate all this detail detail will create a document and will provide us with his license i am the licensed appraiser right here is my license so appraiser license always should be in the file right according uh, along with all the detail that has been created by him right there will be a certification information when the this appraisal has been created so whenever we say that when it has been created so that it that become the effective date from which date this appraisal is effective right 
Validation for appraisal is again a different thing. Validation whenever we have appraisal greater than 120 days old from the application date, right? If it is more than 120 days old, we need a recertification. We do not need the entire document again. Someone who can certify that yes, everything written in this still valid. Recertification. And if it is more than 180 days old, then it becomes invalid, right? It becomes invalid. And then in that case, what we need to do? In that case, we need a new appraisal. So it is valid only for six months or 180 days, right? So new appraisal document. Okay, now it was rightly said that in some cases when it comes to although if we are going to give a loan, so collateral is the one up you know, section which includes all the property information. Any question, Baba? You said 180 days, right? 180 days, yes. If okay, it sir. is more than 180 days old, we need a new document, new appraisal. We cannot include this. But if it is more than 120 days old, then we go for a recertification. Then we do not need a new appraisal report. We can still consider this with a recertification. Okay, but if it is more than 180 days old, then it becomes invalid. We need need a new separate new document, new appraisal report. Okay, now what I was telling you, um, so 180 days new appraisal report we required, right? Purpose is like you know whenever somebody is going to give us the the appraisal report what is the purpose of the appraisal report the purpose of appraisal report is to know the value of current market so value of the property at the current market it could be in 2000 this property could be of of 200000 in 2010 but in 2022 what is the current market value how we will get to know this person appraiser who is certified licensed person they are going to tell us according to based on all this information this is what the value is for the property so there are different approach to calculate to to calculate the value for this property in the current market Right. So anyone, whenever any lender is supposed to give a loan to any borrower, this one document is the most important document. Because on the basis of that, if somebody wanted a loan on the 200,000 property, 300,000, we won't be able to give him. But we cannot deny as well, unless we have this certified document which tells no your property has only 200,000 market value at current time so go according to that right so your loan is going to be according to this value 98 90% 95% 80% 70% those will come into the picture only based on this value we cannot give any random loan to any so to what is the property value that we will get to know from only this document so whenever purchase anyone is going to purchase a property this is the mandatory document in all files when it comes to refinance 90 percent of the refinance will always have full document or will always have appraisal document there are certain cases where appraisal could be could be have you heard about that one particular uh, disclosure that known as waiver right appraisal waiver what happens in the appraisal waiver that most of the time when you will see these are going to be streamline or earl those are irrl right those no doc no doc refinance those kind of few products where appraisal is not required now how that makes sense without knowing the pr property value right we can give a loan that is possible in some cases wherever borrower mostly goes for only maybe within within a short span of time like maybe within a year they are going to apply the loan there could be different circumstances but i'm just giving an example that sometimes it happens that borrower, borrower or you know the bank who previously given the loan or maybe within the same year they given the loan to borrower and now they are offering him a lower interest rate property same everything is same right but they are giving them a 
lower interest rate offer or they are going to give you know make wanted to make some modification in their loan they wanted to lower down their payment so those circumstances sometimes bor they ask okay let's reduce this because it is a very recent property or very recent property mostly it happens on the primary residence right where borrower is currently living so we know that borrower is living there and he or she just had taken a loan from us so we can give them loan on a on a no doc mean no document required it is just going to be a kind of modification refinance modification where they will be it's not exactly i'm talking modification that is related to hamp or you know where borrower find it difficult to make the payment and they go for modification not that modification it's a kind of offer sometimes that bank or lender will give to the borrower that okay now you took a loan 6% now you can go for a lower interest rate because index is much lower than so you can uh, reapply the loan just pay some transaction charges and your payment or your interest rate could be lower could be low down so in those cases you will see mostly appraisal is not required because the loan was recently taken by from the same lender right or from the fenimi and they have feni or freddy they have given appraisal waiver that okay no appraisal requirement because appraisal is one of the expensive document in this loan transaction it starts from minimum 500 dollars and it goes to 700 750 sometimes 800 dollar as well so that is a huge cost for borrower so sometimes on the based on the circumstances borrower will also get appraisal waiver in refinance mostly in the uh primary residences where the borrower is going to refinance their loan within a year or within a short span of time is that clear to everyone yes sir very nice okay so that is what about the history of documentation validation appraiser appraisal report and these are the different now these documents you know this document appraisal report is going to going to differ on a case product by product program by program right or not a program by but i would say more on the different property so like property we have an sfr property right sfr property whether it is a pud or it is an um, sfr sfr or pud right or pud those are single family residence one unit one unit homes and detached especially detached right appraisal form is going to be different and that is called fenimi form number 1004 everyone knows what is the form number 1003 no one knows what is 1003 loan application loan application correct so 1004 is the very next document is the appraisal document 1004 is specially for the one unit family detached home includes detached pud right 1004 and there is a 2055 also now what is the difference it is a full appraisal report full appraisal report there it is a limited sometimes again i am telling sometimes the appraisal waiver will not be given but a limited review mostly it is going to be the exterior one somebody will go to on a drive basis they will take a you know it is also called a drive way appraisal right somebody goes not get into the property they take the photograph property is still there whatever it looks however it looks like it looks like that that is 1005 limited appraisal exterior only okay it will only give the exterior information now if have fenimi form so there are going to be freddy mac form as well right now what are freddy mac form the similar form known as 70 there is no difference only the numbers are different when it comes to fenimi it is 1004 freddy mac it is 70 form 105 limited is going to remain same for both 2055 it will give a limited detail only the exterior information when we will go through the appraisal you will see what is the exterior detail there okay the next is manufactured right or let's say next is condominium so what are condominium properties condominium properties are 
this one like these are condominium properties remember multi unit multi unit fam not multi units but condominium multi okay. units are different. like a building like a building remember okay. condominium properties condominium properties are you know high rise condo low rise condo any building that has four story four stories that is called low rise and any story that any building that has more than four stories those are called high rise condominium properties right there is one door to get into this property for a, to any any of the home, home right if and you receive ever this prop if your property type is condo condominium right then you we, we cannot accept that appraisal report here but there is going to be a different appraisal that is form number 1073 okay 1073 is the form okay, number so 1073 is the form number for fannie mae and when it comes to freddie mac that is the form number 465 okay now there is another form that is 1075 1075 again is a kind of recertification or a limited appraisal right and here 466 form number done very nice okay the next type next type is 224 unit here is a home one roof right and there are four units in this home four different unit number 1 number 2 number 3 4 now it could be two unit it could be three unit it could be four unit we know that that is called two to four units or mostly obviously no one can no one is going to occupy this property as primary only they can occupy one unit rest of the three unit will always be an investment purpose so if investment so obviously it is called income income appraisal or income properties that is the form number 1025 and the same form is known in the freddy mac as form number 72 okay now we have discussed all these already so i'm not going to discuss the property type here after this the next is uh, going to be manufactured home right those are called factory built home remember manufactured you will see many less manufactured home because many less lender used to work on them so you can say manufactured house or factory built homes right form number 1004 but c if you ever see ever see there is a 1004 form but it is also written c you should easily be able to make out it's for manufactured home right in the similar way like the for one unit property that is 1004 and 70 so there is 70b If you see 70B or 1004C, those are manufactured home forms, appraisal forms, appraisal reports. Okay, is there any any other property that is remaining? I think so. these are most of. Yeah, there is one more that is uh, cooperative, right? Co-ops, cooperative. we know that what is the difference between cooperative i have told that like it it looks like a, you know similar to pud properties but all these properties will not be actually in the name of these holders but share a point of share right like 10 people they got together they included the money and then they developed a property or society right cooperative societies mostly people who are working together in one corporation they used to create these kind of cooperative societies and then 
none of the person will have you know property rights but they will have shareholder rights so let's say they they club uh, 100 or uh, 1 million right 1 million together and they develop this so everyone will have equal share right according to de- their share they will get a possession for the properties and once anyone wanted to sell the property instead of pr- selling directly the property they will be selling the their share right that is how cooperative societies work we have discussed it already so whenever it comes to cooperative societies if you see a form number 2090 or 2095 these are the forms those are being included for the those are the these are the appraisal forms these are the appraisal report those gets created for cooperative societies whenever you see these form numbers you can easily make out what kind of property or whenever you have a particular property you are working on a loan that is a condo two unit you need to see that you the appraisal report should get completed on these forms clear to everyone now so let me give you some more detail on this so whenever let's say whenever a, an appraisal report is created right there will be as is value now what is this as is value 